Okay, let's start. Yeah, so the the first problem that we are going to see today is a very simple one. Yeah, if B is a Boolean algebra, A is an atom, then either A is below a given element x or it is below its complement. How to prove that? Whenever we want to say that one of the two things happens, then what do we do? I mean, uh, as I told you already that for Boolean algebras, the proofs by contradiction are always the best thing. So, somehow we have to try to introduce some negation in there, right? So, suppose A is not less equal x, then what will happen? You remember there is a property that A is less equal negation y if and only if A meet y is equal to 0. So, now use the same thing then A meet negation x is not equal to 0. Okay, but A is an atom and a meet negation x is less equal a, correct? Meet of two elements is less equal either one of them. So, therefore, what can you conclude? Therefore, and since A meet negation x is non-zero, below any atom there are only two elements, either zero or that element itself. So, therefore, A meet negation x is equal to A and therefore, in other language A is less equal negation x. Done? Yeah, very simple problem to solve. Okay, then let us look at the second problem now, which says that this P f c x, P f c x is the collection of all finite or cofinite subsets of x. Now, that is a sub algebra of a given uh, of p x for any set x. So, what is the meaning of sub algebra? It should be a subset. Well, clearly p f c x is a subset of p x, correct? then it should contain the same 0 and 1. So, what is the 0 for p f c x? Empty set is in p f c x because it is finite. Then x is also in p f c x because it is cofinite. Yeah, its complement is empty, so therefore it is fine. Its complement is finite, so it is cofinite. So therefore, we have verified the first three conditions that it is a subset which contains the same zero, which contains the same one. Now, what else do we need to check? The intersection of any two. I mean the the meet operation of the smaller set should coincide with the meet operation of the larger set, larger Boolean algebra. So, if uh, A comma B belong to P f c x, I am just going to do one of them, okay? uh, belong to P f c x, then uh, there are four cases. What is the first case? That A and B are finite. Then what can we say? A intersection B is? Yes, then A intersection B and A union B are finite. Similarly, if I say that A, B are cofinite, then what can we say? What is A intersection B? Then A intersection B 
is equal to the complement of x minus what? A complement. Yes. So, A complement union B complement, but what is A complement and B complement? They are finite sets. So, their union is a finite set. So, therefore, this is a cofinite set. And similarly for A union B. Yeah, so we are using De Morgan. Okay, please make sure you cite this result, De Morgan. Then if A is finite and B is cofinite, then a intersection B is a subset of A, correct? It is a subset of A, A is finite because it is a subset of a finite set, so it has to be finite and A union B contains B. So therefore, any super set of cofinite set is also cofinite. Okay, and what would be the fourth case that A is cofinite and B is finite? You can do that on your own. Well, lastly, you have to check that the uh, the complement of every element in PFCX is also in PFCX. Is that clear? Because complement of finite is cofinite, complement of cofinite is finite, so that's done. I would like to point out something more. Yeah, now PFCX is a Boolean algebra. Yeah, so consider P cof X subset of PFCX. Okay, this is a filter. of PFCX. What do we need to check for filter property? Tell me. One, it should be an upper set, non-empty upper set, proper non-empty upper set. All of them are clear? Yeah, this is clearly up. So clearly, proper non-empty and, uh, and upper set. Okay. So, now we know uh, these three conditions are true. Is it closed under meets? What is the meet? In, in PFCX, what is the meet? Intersection. So, intersection of two cofinite sets is again cofinite, right? Also closed under binary intersections. In fact, I would like to claim something more that this is not just a filter, but it is also a, an ultra filter. So, I, let me write that ultra filter. Why is it an ultra filter? Because for any element in PFCX, yeah, let me write that. So, for all A in PFCX, either A belongs to P cof or X minus A belongs to P cof. Yeah, by definition. So, and can both of them belong? Because if both of them belong, then intersection also belongs and intersection is empty. So, yeah, we know it is a proper subset. So, this is your first example of an ultra filter which is not principal. See, this is non-principal, not principal 
not principal means that it is not the upper set of a single element. Single element you understand like if you take any atom, this is also atomic Boolean algebra, right? Singletons are the atoms. So, the upper set of a singleton is clearly a filter, it is clearly an ultra filter, but this is not of that form. So, this is your example of an ultra filter which is not principal. Any questions? What is principal? What is meaning of principal filter? U of capital A. Is it of the form? Yeah, I mean not of the form. U of capital B for any B. Any other questions? Okay, so this was your exa first example of a non principal ultra filter. They will be useful later in our logic part of the course, non principal ultra filters. Okay, so now here are two statements uh, about families of filters. Suppose you are given a family of filters, then can you show that their intersection? is also a filter right so let me write it here uh, i mean i'm not going to write the entire solution so does one belong to intersection of fi when will it belong to intersection when it belongs to each one, but each fi is a filter, so done. Can 0 belong to the intersection? Uh, well, I should add one word, yeah, is a non-empty family, oops, non-empty family of filters, yeah, so then 0 will not belong. Yes, so 0 does not belong to, I mean uh, let me uh, call this F0, yeah, so 0 does not belong to F0 since 0 does not belong to Fi for, uh, for any i, yes, then what is the third condition? That is it an upper set? So, let A belong to F0, then A belongs to Fi for all i, then if I take uh, B bigger equal A, then if A belongs to Fi and B is bigger equal A, then because each Fi is an upper set, B also belongs to yeah, I mean please continue with this proof, yeah, then similarly if I consider a non-empty family of proper filters, then I will also get that it is a proper filter that I have already shown, yeah, 0 does not belong. So therefore, any arbitrary intersection of filters is again a filter, any arbitrary intersection of proper filters is again a proper filter. Okay. Now, let us come back to the other direction, what can we say about union, union of a family of filters, well we are not talking about an arbitrary union, but we can talk about a chain, what is a chain, chain of filters? that any two filters in that chain are comparable. So, I have written it using a more sophisticated language, see that if j less equal is a linear order and then f j is a chain of filters indexed by j, 
such that f j1 is contained inside f j2 if and only if j1 is less equal j2. So now this is giving me an indexing set which is also ordered for a chain. Now what do you need to check that I mean let me again call this f0 yeah f, f0 uh, uni equal to union of fj is a filter we need to check this how do we check something is a filter uh, is a I mean maybe I should add non-empty okay how do I check that something is a filter first property one okay so uh, one belongs to f j for all j in j and therefore one belongs to f0 good then if a and b belong to f0 then uh, and sorry sorry then uh, since A belongs to F0, where should it belong? To some Fj, right. Then A, A, A belongs to Fj1 for some J1 and B belongs to Fj2 for some J2. Now by trichotomy, what can you conclude? J1 and J2 are comparable, yes. So, without loss of generality, assume J1 is less equal J2, then Fj1 is subset of Fj2 and therefore, A and B are both in Fj2. Since Fj2, so A meet B is also in Fj2, since Fj2 is is a filter and therefore, A meet B, now it belongs to some Fj, A meet B belongs to some Fj, so therefore, it must belong to F0. Please verify the remaining conditions and there is also this red thing that proper if you take a chain of proper filters, then its union is also proper. Yeah, because what happens? 0 does not belong to any of the Fj's. So, therefore, 0 does not belong to F0. F0. Okay? Now, I had asked you a question regarding Zorn's lemma. So, given a filter, a proper filter uh, f of b show that there is a prime filter f0 of b such that f is a subset of F0. Okay. Now, uh, then I also gave you a hint. Consider the poset P equal to all those F primes such that F prime is a proper subset of B and F prime is a filter. under inclusion yeah inclusion means containment okay now consider this poset if we want to use zorn's lemma then there are a few things to be checked what is the first thing everything no oh, non empty yeah. non empty if you are given a non empty poset such that every chain has an upper bound then you can show that there exists a maximal element by Zorn's lemma, 
why is it non empty why is p non empty f belongs to p therefore f is non empty yeah so f belongs to p and therefore p is non empty then what is the second thing to check that any chain of uh, elements of p has an upper bound well any chain is a chain of proper filters so any chain of proper filters has an upper bound that is this proof so therefore there will exist a maximal element and maximal with respect to inclusion and it is a proper maximal with respect to inclusion so it's a maximal filter correct and nupur is going to show us that a maximal filter is prime okay let's go to the next one so suppose b and b prime are boolean algebras and h is a function yeah right now just a function from b to b prime where b and b prime are the underlying sets of the boolean algebra then we want to show that h is a boolean algebra isomorphism if and only if h is a surjective order embedding okay surjective order embedding means if if and only if it is an order isomorphism so order isomorphism on one side and boolean algebra isomorphism on the other side one side is pretty straight forward which side tell me if it is a boolean algebra isomorphism then it is surjective so let me first write that yeah suppose h is a h is a boolean algebra isomorphism then because it's isomorphism by definition it is bijective yeah so therefore h is surjective okay then we need to show it is also an order embedding so order embedding means x is less equal y if and only if hx is less equal hy okay so let us write that now so x is less equal y if and only if what happens x meet y is equal to x if and only if h of x meet y is equal to h of x yeah please i mean i am writing several steps but if you are supposed to write this in in an exam please write all the reasons for the steps yeah so why does this happen it's an isomorphism boolean algebra isomorphism correct so x meet y is equal to x implies i mean okay i mean ideally i should be saying that uh this implies this implies h of x meet y is equal to x but what is h it's a boolean algebra isomorphism so homomorphism so therefore h of x meet h of y is equal to h of x correct and therefore h of x is less equal h of y so this is one side what is the other side uh so suppose okay now suppose so all of those are if and only if statements are they are they is this if and only if x meet y is equal to x if and only if h of x meet y is equal to h of x yes because it's a bijection yes so this is also if and only if so therefore this is this part is done right so this is entirely if and only if okay uh then we are done yeah i mean this part is done so let us prove the reverse implication now suppose h is a surjective this one is a bit tricky surjective order embedding we have to prove several parts for this first of all it is a surjective order embedding so uh, 
First, can you show that h of 0 is equal to 0? First part is h of 0 is equal to 0. It is an order embedding. Please tell me why. Yes, where does it fail? I mean, it is not enough to say it is an order embedding, so h of 0 is equal to 0. First property. So, 0 is less equal x yeah. for each x, yeah, for all x in B, 0 is less equal x and therefore, h of 0 is less equal h of x for all x. This still does not say everything we, we need, right? h of 0 is less equal only the elements which are in the image of h. But since h is surjective, since h is surjective, if y belongs to b dash, then y is equal to h of x for some x and therefore, h of 0 is less equal y for all y in b dash and therefore, h of 0 has to be 0. Understood this proof? We cannot just rely on it being an order embedding. We have to use the property that it is surjective. Okay, so h of 0 is equal to 0, that is that part is done. You can similarly show h of 1 is equal to 1, yeah, so I am not going to do that. Okay, uh, similar. Now, third thing, yeah, we need to show that h of x meet y, uh, x uh, a meet b is equal to h of a meet h of b. Okay. So, what is A meet B? So, clearly, yeah, this is the thing we are trying to prove. Clearly, A meet B is less equal A and A meet B is less equal B. So, therefore, H of A meet B is less equal H of A and H of A meet B is less equal H of B. Understood this much? Now, whenever an element is less equal to things, then it should be less equal there? Meet. meet. So, therefore, h of a meet b is less equal h of a meet h of b. Okay, good. So far, so good. What about the other direction? We also need to show other inequality, then we are done. So, let C be in B be such that H of C is equal to H of A meet H of B by surjectivity. H of A meet H of B is an element, is an arbitrary element of B dash. So, it must be of the form h of c for some c. Okay, then what can you say about this? Therefore, h of c is less equal h of a and h of c is less equal h of b. Therefore, c is less equal a. Here I am using the order reflection property and c is less equal b. Therefore, c is less equal a meet B. So, therefore, H of C is less equal H of A meet B. But what was H of C? Therefore, H of A meet H of B is less equal H of A meet B. Understood? This whole process is simple if you pay attention and please write reasons for individual steps. So, I have shown both sides, both less equals and therefore, they are equal. Finally, 
yeah finally i'm just going to give you a hint that h of x is equal to negation h of x is equal to h of negation x one side is pretty straightforward uh, i mean yeah so negation h of x is some element of b dash so you assume yeah let uh, y belong to b b such that h of y is equal to negation h of x yeah by surjectivity you get this then we claim that y is the complement of x but what is the meaning that y is the complement of x that their meet should be 0 and join should be 1 and please follow that yeah show that y meet negation uh, y meet x is equal to 0 and y join negation x uh, sorry y join x is equal to well let me show this y meet x is equal to 0 so y meet x is equal to 0 if and only if h of y meet x is equal to h of 0 yeah this is our order embedding order embedding means that x is less equal y this is less equal this if and only if this is less equal this and this is less equal this if and only if this is less equal this right so now if and only if now so far we have shown in step 2 that meets are also preserved so therefore h of y meet h of x is equal to h of 0 oh sorry h of 0 is also 0 that we have shown now what is h of y y was chosen to satisfy negation h of x meet h of x is equal to 0 but this is true but rhs is true yeah and all this is if and only if because that is just the definition right negation h of x meet h of x has to be equal to 0 h of x is an arbitrary element but rhs is true therefore lhs is true yeah so y meet x is equal to 0 that we have shown similarly you can show y join x is equal to 1 and we are done this is long but pretty straightforward any questions okay let's stop in that case